you for having me here. I really enjoyed the workshop. So uh, I talked about algorithmic patient persuasion. This is a joint work with uh, my supervisor, Shadin Dugami. Uh, so let me start. Uh, so, uh, so what is persuasion? Well, let me start with the example that uh, many of you are familiar with, uh, writing recommendation letters. So uh, this is basically a game played between, hello? Hello? OK, good. Uh, so this is basically a game played a uh, two-player game played between an advisor and a recruiter. So to be concrete, let's say one third of the advisor students are excellent, and two thirds of the advisor students are average. So uh, so this is known like from the past uh, observation of the advisor students. And a fresh graduate is drawn from this population uniformly at a random. So you can see that he is excellent with the probability one third, and average with the probability two thirds. So there's a recruiter, he, and he wants to decide he, whether he wants to uh, hire the student or not. So the recruiter is going to get a utility one for hiring an excellent student and a negative one for hiring an average student. And otherwise, he gets a utility zero if he don't hire. So you can see that the recruiter would only be willing to hire if the student is more likely to be excellent. Okay? But a priori, the recruiter only knows the advisor student population. He doesn't know specifically whether this, this particular graduate student is excellent or not. And on the other hand, the advisor is going to get utility one if the student is hired and get utility zero otherwise. So you can see that he only cares about whether his student was hired or not. But uh, the advisor has an informational advantage. Namely, he knows that whether this particular student is excellent or not. Okay, uh, so the advisor has students graduating every year, and somehow he wants to decide a long-term policy about how to write a recommendation letters for his students. So what is a so what is a good strategy? Well, let's let's try some uh, let's try some case. So what if he always write a good, excellent recommendation letter? Well. Uh, you might, so this is kind of just equivalent to revealing no information because if you're always writing good recommendation later, uh, then you're going to lose credibility and people don't believe in you. So the, uh, the recruiter is going to behave, just act uh, according to the prior distribution. So in this case, because the student is less likely to be excellent, so the student will not be hired and the advisor get utility zero. Okay? So I guess everyone knows this is not a good strategy to always say good. And so our second attempt is just try to reveal four information. I'm always telling the truth. The student is good, I'm saying good, and it's average, average, I'm saying average. And in this case, because one third of the students are excellent, so the advisor is going to get a utility uh, one, one third in, in expectation. So, uh, so what is a better strategy? Well, I, I guess some of you might already realized. So the best strategy turns out to reveal noisy information. So in this particular example, it turns out that the following scheme is optimal. In particular, whenever the student is excellent, you're going to write a good recommendation later. But when the student is average, slightly under half of the time, you still write a good recommendation later. And the rest of the time, you write average recommendation later. Well, now from the recruiter's perspective, if I receive a good recommendation later, I know that this guy is not for surely excellent. But you can see that it's still kind of more likely to be excellent. So I'm willing to hire this guy. And in that case, so whenever a good recommendation letter is sent, the student will be hired, and the advisor get utility one. So you can see that in this case, the advisor get utility slightly under uh, two-thirds. Th two so here I basically show you an example that the uh, advisor can uh, utilize his information advantage to persuade the recruiter to take an action that the advisor actually prefers. So that's kind of the whole spirit of persuasion. So persuasion to be, is basically the act of exploiting an informational advantage in order to influence the decisions of others. Uh, this is actually intrinsic in, many, in most human activities, like advertising, politics, voting, and security. Uh, in fact, if you think about this uh, presentation currently here, it's also a persuasion game. Uh, so, uh, therefore, it's not surprising. It's not it's unsurprising that they ha this has been the theme of large body of uh, recent work. So, I think the importance of persuasion can be summarized by the following title of a paper, which say that one quarter of GDP is persuasion. So, uh, 
in this paper, we focus on perhaps one of the most fundamental models in this space called the Bayesian persuasion, which was uh, proposed by Kamenitsa and Jensko. This has been the building block of uh, many models and applications in recent work. So here, there were two players, uh, a persuader, who we're going to call sender, and uh, a decision maker, who we're going to call receiver. So in previous example, the, persuader, the, the sender is the advisor who's going to send a recommendation later, and the, the uh, receiver is the recruiter who's going to make, uh, make a decision about hire or not. Okay? And the receiver is going to take one of n actions, and every action is going to result in a sender utility and a, re and a receiver utility. Well, if this is the only problem, then it's trivial, the, because the receiver is going to just take his favorite action and result in a utility for both players. But it turns out that the payoff depends on the uncertain state of nature, and uh, the receiver only knows a prior distribution on this state of nature theta, but the sender can observe exactly, observe the realization of theta. So in the previous example, this theta, theta is precisely whether the student is excellent or not. That's kind of random state. And it's known by the uh, advisor, but it's unknown to the, uh, to the re recruiter. So uh, mathematically, a state of nature theta is basically just two n numbers. If you have another state of nature theta, that's another two n numbers specify a different payoff structure for you. Okay? And we're assuming the sender can commit to a signaling scheme, which is basically a randomized map from the state of nature to, uh, to the set of signals. So in previous example, uh, the signaling scheme basically is uh, uh, advisor's policy about writing recommendation letters, and the set of signals is basically the way of writing, uh, writing letters. So you can see that this map can be randomized, because I already showed you one case where when the student is average, the advisor sometimes say the student is, uh, sometimes write a good recommendation letter, and sometimes write an average recommendation letter. So it can be randomized. And the receiver will receive a signal and then base updates his belief about the state of nature and make, a, make, make his favorite action, the best response. So for example, the recruiter is going to receive a recommendation later and updates his belief about the student's status and make a decision about hire or not. Okay? So, so that's a model. And uh, the, the, so basically, the, the, the question we're interested in is to compute the, to figure out the optimal signaling scheme. And uh, with some thoughts, it's not hard to see that an optimal signaling scheme need, a, need not to use more than n signals, with signal i going to recommend the action i as the receiver's best response. This is because, in, because every, every time when a receiver receives a signal, he makes a decision. Now you imagine if two signals are going to result in the same decision for the receiver without a loss, you can just combine them together, which would not affect uh, neither, uh, both players' utility. So without a loss, you can assume there were just n signals. And every signal is going to correspond to a recommendation to the, uh, to the receiver about his actions. So we're going to say a signal is incentive compatible. So this basically, there's a notion of incentive compatibility. We're going to say a signal is incentive compatible if, uh, if I recommend a signal i, then action i is really the best uh, response for the receiver. OK, that's just a, a notation. Uh, so, so now we're interested in computing the optimal signaling scheme. The following variant of the recommendation letter example kind of shows you that the optimal scheme can sometimes be uh, intricate. So here, the, uh, here is another example of recommendation letter. And the advisor has, here the advisor has two students, and the recruiter wants to recruit one of them. So notice that the recruiter's action is not about uh, hire or not hire. It's really about which student I should hire. So, a state theta is a uniform random type from this L, S, or W set for, uh, for each student. So different, uh, different types of students can generate different short-term and long-term academic achievements. So here, L basically stands for long-term. So L type students are going to have long-term academic achievement two, but short-term achievement is zero. This is some, like, some student working on some hard problem that maybe haven't made good progress currently, but he's, uh, he has a long-term uh, potential. So S basically stands for a short-term uh, short student. The S-type student is going to have long-term uh, achievement of 1 plus epsilon and the short-term achievement of 1. Okay? And W stands basically stands for a week. A W-type student have like long-term and short-term achievement of both zero. Okay? Uh, so 
the recruiter's utility is uh, long term, the student's long term achievement, because imagine that this is uh, like a university and they can tenure the, tenure the student later. So they really care about the long term uh, utility. But uh, somehow the advisor's utility is the short term utility. So maybe because the advisor is kind of up to tenure soon, so he wants his student to publish more recently. Uh, so, uh, so we can see that the advisor only get utility uh, when an uh, S-type student is hired. So what is optimal, so what is optimal, so what is optimal uh, recommendation strategy here? Well, let's still start from the case with uh, no information. What if the advisor reveal no information in this case? Well, because we're assuming the state of theta is a kind of uniform random type, so every student is independent a uniform randomly draw from these states. So the student is going to look the same to the recruiter. So the recruiter is going to just uh, pick up to a student, and the student is going to have S type with probability one third. So in expectation, the advisor's utility is also one third. Okay? Uh, so what if the advisor reveals four information? He's honest about the types of the students. Well, in this case, the only case that the advisor can get a utility one is that an S type student is hired. And this happens only when, only at the following three cases, both students have S type, or one of them has S type, and one of them has a weak type. Okay, because if a long type student shows up, that student is gonna be hired. So, and every case happens with probably one over nine. So in expectation, the expected advisor utility is also one third. And it turns out that the optimal signaling scheme in this case requires you to properly correlate the student's types. In particular, whenever there is exactly one type S student, you're gonna recommend that student. Otherwise, you just uniform randomly recommend a student. And you can see that this scheme is incentive compatible because uh, the long-term utility of uh, S type student is greater than a uniform mixture of uh, L type and W type, which is just one. So whenever S type student really is recommended, it's really the best strategy for the recruiter. And in this case, whenever an S type student shows up, he's gonna be recommended. And it's not hard to see that this happens with the probability five over nine, so the uh, advisor also get a utility five over nine. Okay, so hopefully this example kind of gives some intuition, gives some like, give you some sense that the optimal scheme could be uh, intricate in, uh, in general. So uh, also notice that in this case, we're gonna call the receiver's action IID, and I'll come, uh, I'll come back to this uh, model later. Because, uh, so in this case, it's IID because these two uh, students basically look, look at the same to the recruiter a priori. They're in, independent and identically drawn from the same type set. Okay, uh, so that's kind of the econ part of this talk. So uh, hopefully the model is clear to everyone. Now I'm gonna talk about the computational aspects of this model. Basically we're interested in algorithms that compute the optimal signaling scheme. So let me start with a simple case where everything is given explicitly to you. So in particular, the prior distribution is given explicitly that you have like a, a set of states of nature and every state of, nat every state of nature has a given probability. And uh, the receiver has n actions and for every state of nature and an a receiver action, there is a sender utility and a receiver utility. Everything is given explicitly. And in this case, it's not hard to see that the optimal signaling scheme can be easily computed by a, uh, by a linear program where the only variable is xi theta, that is the probability of recommending action i at the state of nature theta. So you don't need to look into details of this linear program since it's simply a linear program that computes the optimal correlated equilibrium and uh, optimal in the sense that it maximizes the sender's utility, okay? So I believe like it's very easy to figure out if uh, offline. So, uh, so okay. So this case is simple. It's just a linear program. The question we're interested in is what if the prior distribu the distribution has exponentially large support but is succinctly described? So what do I mean by this? Well, I think the uh, well the IID distribution is a very natural uh, case for this. So here. Uh, recall that the receiver has n actions and every action has a type. Notice that a type is nothing but just two numbers that specify the sender's utility and the receiver's utility. If you recall, uh, 
for example, a weak type student is going to have a utility zero for the, for the recruiter and a utility zero for the uh, advisor. Okay? And uh, a state of nature is basically a type profile for every, state, for, for every action. So we're assuming that, that there were m types, so, and uh, every ti is draw an ID from, uh, one of, uh, from this type set, and we assume that the marginal distribution is given explicitly. So how many states of nature are there here? Well, because for every action, I have m choices. Every action I have m choices. You can choose m types. So there were totally m to the n types. So how do we solve this problem? If you recall the linear program before, there's a, the, the linear program basically has the variable is a polynomial in the number of states of nature. But here we have so many states of nature. So you cannot just plug in, the, plug in the problem into the linear program and solve it efficiently. Uh, nevertheless, we show that in this case, when the actions are IID, uh, the optimal signaling scheme can still be implemented polynomial in the number of actions and the number of types. Notice that it's not in the number of type profiles, it's just in the number of uh, types, which is M here. And this result is basically uh, is built on two uh, key ideas. The first idea is analogy between single item auction with IID bidders and uh, this Bayesian persuasion with IID actions. In particular, you could think of actions roughly as bidders. And uh, the recommending an action I is roughly like you are selling the item to, uh, to bid I. So here's a more concrete illustration. So you have seen this like single item auction for many times in the talk, but let me record it again. So, this is a single item auction with ID bidders. So you're gonna, each bidder I has a type draw from the same distribution independently. And uh, the auction starts by every bidder reports, uh, reports her type to the auctioneer. The, so the auctioneer then receives the type profile, which I'm gonna denote it as theta also. And after receiving the, the type profile, the auctioneer will decide it to random, possibly randomly allocate the item to, uh, to, to the bidder. So this P theta I, is gonna be the probability that your received uh, type profile is theta and the probability that I'm allocating the item to bit i, okay? Now, so that's kind of just, the, this, this is basically, this P specify an allocation rule for the auction. And so, now if you look at uh, the persuasion case, well, it's pretty similar. So basically in persuasion, each action i has a type which is also independently drawn from the same distribution f and the sender is going to observe this type profile and it decides to which action to recommend, possibly randomly. So you can see that this p theta i is going to specify uh, your signaling scheme. So mathematically, you can see that this allocation rule is just equivalent to this, uh, uh, to this uh, signaling scheme. So this is the ana uh, analogy between uh, auctions and, uh, and, and, and uh, persuasion. But this is not actually not enough. So the result also relies on the second idea, which is a symmetric characterization of the optimal signaling scheme. In particular, we show that there always exists an optimal scheme that is symmetric in the following sense. So each action is recommended with the probability precisely one over n, and any recommended action gonna has the same marginal posterior type distribution i, uh, type distribution x, and any unrecommended action also have the same type uh, posterior distribution, but it's another distribution y. And by the total law, by the law of total probability mass, x and y has a linear relation. So the nice thing here is that this basically shows the signaling scheme can be characterized simply by this uh, marginal distribution x of the recommended action. But, but what, what is x here? If you recall the analogy to single item auction, this x is actually precisely the interim allocation rule that has just been talked by Tim uh, in the previous talk. So, uh, so you can see that this feasible or you can say implementable marginal type distribution are precisely the symmetric interim allocation rule which uh, lies in a nice polytope characterized by border as just talked before. And uh, therefore, our problem is just the linear optimization problem over borders polytope with some additional incentive compatibility constraints. Since there were like algorithmic, uh, method, uh, algor algorithmic uh, methods for this borders polytope, so we can solve this problem uh, efficiently in polynomial time. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is good, so we can 
even though there were exponentially many states of nature, we can still solve it in polynomial time. Uh, so, so what is the next natural question to ask? Well, perhaps the most natural one is, can we generalize it to independent but non-identical distributions? Uh, as we just uh, learned from the previous lecture, we know that the Borders theorem generalized to the independent but non-identical bidders. One might hope that a similar reduction would also work here. But surprisingly, actually, this breaks down. In particular, we proved that the, it is sharply hard to compute the optimal expected standard utility in persuasion with independent but non-identical actions. Uh, so I'm not going to show you the proof. The proof is uh, kind of a little bit involved. But instead, I'm going to show you what goes wrong here. So it turns out that the, this is due, it turns out that this is due to the different notion of incentive compatibility in these two problems. In particular, in auction, incentive compatibility means uh, each bidder does not prefer to uh, does not prefer to misreport his type. Uh, but in persuasion, the incentive compatibility basically means when action I is recommended, you'd better just take this action. Uh, you don't, uh, so basically, the recommended action is better than the other actions. So to express the IC incentive compatibility constraint in persuasion, so when action I is recommended, we basically need two pieces of information. One piece, inf one information, one piece is the posterior type distribution of the recommended action I. Also, you also needed the posterior type distribution of all the unrecommended action, because you need to argue that this recommended action I is better than the, than the unrecommended action. Now, if you recall au auction, so when the bidder is allocated the item, the incentive compatibility basically saying that uh, you, you'd better report your own, own type compared with reporting some other of your own types. So you only need the information for this particular bidder I. In other words, you only need the first piece of information. You don't need the second one. So in persuasion, basically, we need to keep track of more information about this uh, signaling scheme. That's where, the, that's where it makes the problem harder than auction in this setting. So, and this is not an issue in the IID case, really because of our symmetric characterization of the, uh, of the posterior distribution. Because basically, in that setting, the, uh, the posterior type distribution of the unrecommended action, which I denote as Y in that case, is actually fully determined by the posterior type distribution of the recommended action. So, that, so it's not an issue there in, this, uh, in the IID setting. Okay, so, so this is bad news. Basically, after we slightly generalized the original result a little bit, then we in, uh, encounter the hardness, uh, computational hardness result. So what is the next, so, so what can we hope? Well, so as computer scientists, I guess one of the most natural questions is, can we approximately solve the problem? And uh, fortunately, it turns out that you can solve this problem approximately. And actually, you can solve it approximately for a much more general setting, which, uh, which we call the black box distribution. Here, I'm just assuming that the prior distribution is given to me as a black box. I don't, know, I don't, I make, I make no, I don't need any assumption on the structure of the distribution as long as I can sample from this black box. So basically, you can, you can just think as the distribution is given by a bunch of samples. This is kind of a little bit similar to the, to the empirical auction design, which was talked by Yane uh, yesterday. So I'm giving, basically, I'm giving a sample from the distribution. I want to compute the optimal signal in scheme. And uh, record that one sample of a state of nature theta basically is 2n numbers that specify the payoff structure for, uh, for different actions. Okay, and uh, as I said, this is particularly useful when you don't know the prior distribution, but a set of data is presented to you. And uh, it turns out that in this general black box model, we can show that uh, the um, epsilon optimal and epsilon incentive compatible signaling scheme can be implemented in time polynomial in one over epsilon and the number of actions n. Okay, this is almost the best you can hope. Uh, so. It turns out that the, the algorithm for this result is very simple. Basically, we just uh, solve the natural linear program I described before on the empirical. So basically, the, the input of the problem is the state of nature theta. And my output is going to be a signal uh, that corresponds to these states. Uh, 
The algorithm is as follows. I'm going to solve the natural linear program I, just de I described before on the empirical distribution of polynomially many samples plus the given input state theta. And then I just signal as the LP suggests for my, uh, for my given state theta. The only a little bit tricky part is that you have to relax the IC constraint by epsilon, basically, to prevent overfitting. Uh, so, so that's basically the algorithm. And it turns out that this is uh, essentially, this simple algorithm is basically the best you can do. You might worry that we lose both uh, epsilon in the optimality and epsilon in the incentive compatibility. But we show that this is actually inevitable due to uh, information theoretical reasons. In particular, we proved that in this black box distribution model, the following holds for any signaling scheme with the polynomial many samples. If your, if your scheme is incent exactly incentive compatible, then it has to be far away from optimality. And on the other hand, if, it is, if the scheme is optimal, then it has to be far away from incentive compatibility. So this bi-criteria loss is uh, in inevitable. And to the, the proof of the theorem involves uh, design uh, distributions that are actually close in statistical distance. And any scheme that is uh, uh, exactly optimal or exactly uh, incentive compatible has to distinguish between this uh, distribution that are very close, which, uh, require, which, gonna have, uh, which forces you to take uh, a many, uh, e exponentially many samples. Uh, so, to conclude, we basically we initiated a complexity theoretical study for one of the most fundamental models in the literature of persuasion, and we examined three of the most natural input models and pinned down the computational complexity for each. In particular, for the IID setting, we have polynomial time algorithm, and beyond that, we have a bicriteria PDAS, uh, FPDAS, and we showed that this is basically the best you can do. So uh, here are some additional models that uh, kind of additional models relate to ba Bayesian persuasion. The first uh, model, uh, the first is in, this, in stack burger games. It's played between a leader and a follower. Uh, you can, uh, they, they will consider how the leader can uh, persuade the follower uh, to, to take action that he's, he, he likes. And, uh, there were also work about persuading voters, and uh, recently there is a work taking an algorithmic study and show the computational results for how, how do you optimally persuade in voters. And uh, in the self shrouding case, there were also work consider how do you persuade uh, the ro selfish routers to minimize the overall uh, network latency. Uh, also, there were, so in, these, in this exploration and exploitation uh, paradigm, there were uh, work consider how do you persuade myopic agents to kind of optimize your, your global objective in, the, in this exploration and exploitation trade-off. And also in the influence maximization uh, domain, there will work also consider how do you persuade opinion leaders in a social network so that you maximize your uh, social influence. They will also work uh, consider like the realistic uh, constraints in, in practice, like communication constraints. For example, you are, so uh, you, maybe you are not allowed to send so many signals. You are only allowed to send like a small number of signals. In this case, how do you design your optimal signaling scheme? And they will also work consider privacy constraints. I think this is particularly uh, useful in auction setting, where think of an auctioneer want to persuade his bidders using some information about his extra knowledge about the item. Uh, in, on a, in ad auction, the item is usually the web user. So you are constrained about the privacy of the web users. And how do you do optimal persuasion under these constraints? And there are also like risk, uh, the consider, consider, of, uh, consider risk uh, levels and also the signal might be costly. And to sum up, I think this is a kind of relatively new and active area with many open questions. Uh, so here I would like to mention two directions that I'm, particular, I'm very interested in. The first one is receivers with, you want to persuade receivers with the combinatorial actions. If you recall that in, in the model I described before, the receiver have a listed N actions. But in practice, the receiver might think of like a, a, a Google map user. The receiver might want to take a path from a point to another point. And maybe the receiver want to implement a matching uh, in, in, in some setting 
or maybe the receiver wants to set budgets or submit bids for different ad campaigns. So in this case, you can see that the receiver's action space is kind of combinatorial and is exponentially large. Even more generally, think about the arbitrary, think about a rec receiver who wants to solve uh, any optimization problem, but he's uncertain about the objective function. So, and uh, th so there's uh, th uh, the sender want to persuade the receiver to take action that he favors. And it turns out that this problem is actually highly non-trivial in the very sim even in a very simple setting, like uh, even for the setting where the receiver has. Uh, for example, like a uniform metroid. Our preliminary, preliminary examination showed that in this case, you could easily, uh, easily get a computational hardness result. The, I think, so the key challenge here is that it's really not clear whether you can uh, represent the optimal scheme uh, succinctly in this case. Because if you recall that, the op I, so I mentioned before that the optimal signaling scheme gonna use uh, the, the number of receiver action uh, sorry, the, the number of signals you're going to use is, uh, at a, at a, is basically the number of actions uh, the receiver have. But if the receiver has combinatorially, uh, combinatorially increasing number of actions, then it's hard to kind of represent the signaling scheme. Uh, another di direction I think is interesting is uh, you, want, you, 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 don't, you, you are persuading multiple receivers instead of just one receiver. In this, you could consider this in, like many, in many different contexts. Like, for instance, think about an auctioneer want to persuade the bidders using his extra knowledge about the item, or think of like the, a principal want to persuade selfish routers in a network, and even more generally, any principal want to persuade players in a game. And in this case, because you are, there were multiple receivers, there were two kind of, there were two persuasion scheme, two types of persuasion scheme you can do. One is you can just publicly, you are constrained to publicly announce a signal that everyone gonna hear the same thing. Or maybe you can kind of privately commu communicate with different receivers to do private persuasion. And uh, it's interesting to look at what are, what are the computational complexity for these two different types and how they are, how, how they are different. And uh, finally, so because there were, because there were multiple receivers, the receiver could exchange their knowledge about the signal so that they can kind of get more uh, information from by exchanging the information. It would also be interesting to look at how would this affect the persuasion. Mm, yeah, uh, so that's it. I'll stop here and take questions. <clears throat>